Glory from Gabriel's on BBC Radio Gloucestershire. It is just coming up to ten minutes past three. Now, if you enjoyed that, I think there's a fair chance that Gabriel's are fairly well influenced by the next guy we're going to be talking about. Yep, it's the guy behind songs like this and this. And a bit of this. We could pop a bit of this in there as well. Everybody wants to work with Nile Rogers. Yep, the music of Nile Rogers, Nile Rogers and Sheik being celebrated this Friday night at the Playhouse Theatre in Cheltenham with the band Sheik to Sheik, who are coming to the town for one night only performance, 7.30 on Friday night. Let's have a chat to bass player, musical director for Sheik to Sheik, Aidan Thompson, who joins us on the programme. Hi, Aidan. Hi there, Steve. How are you doing? I'm very good, thank you. Thanks ever so much for joining us. Just hearing those songs, back to even snippets there. You know you're on to a good thing. Every single one of those is what they call a banger. Oh, he's amazing. Nile Rogers is amazing, isn't he? He's just, he's just got that kind of magic touch. <laughs> As a bass player, th- this is dreamland, isn't it? Playing these disco bass lines night after night? Well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the song Good Times maybe has the most famous and recognisable bass line ever, pretty mm. much. So to be able to play that... Um, on stage to hundreds and sometimes you know thousands of people it's, it's a real joy it's a real, yeah it's a real privilege so did, was it you who got the band together you know i, I want to play some Nile rogers bass lines or uh, how did it all come about uh well me i think uh my wife and i we're the um we had this idea a little while ago in that we wanted to create a tribute band to Nile rogers amazing music um we did it in Fe- it was about february 2020 we had this amazing idea and then of course covid came in there's a big lockdown and we couldn't do anything for about a year uh-huh. Um, so we spent all that time kind of getting ready, writing the parts, choosing the outfits, rehearsing the dance moves, and then uh, we were kind of fit and raring to go. As soon as lockdown lifted, we were yeah we were out gigging and, and doing it live. It was great. So you put the band together, but literally bef- before lockdown, and then just couldn't go out. Yeah, our first gig was uh, was a live stream. Like, do you remember um, <laughs> in lockdown there was those yeah. um, like internet live streams, wasn't there? People logging and watching their laptop. That was our first gig. <laughs> Brilliant. And t- then I guess. You knew that there was a bit of interest, people enjoyed it, and you were doing the right thing. Yeah, I mean, with, with um, the back catalogue like Nile Rogers, and with all the hits he's written, I think it's, um, you can't really fail, I don't think. Because every, every song's a banger, really, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, the, the songs are great, but you've got to be able to do them well, otherwise people say, hang on a minute, <laughs> this, this isn't like <laughs> Nile Rogers, this isn't like Chic, this isn't, this isn't Sister Sledge, Diana Ross. I mean, because everybody knows these songs inside out. Yeah, and I think... Um, one of his one of his uh, Nile Rogers' greatest kind of achievements is to write these songs, which are the, on kind of on surface level. They're very simple. They're full of hooks. You can sing along to it. Mm. Once you dive in a little bit deeper, you see how intricately they're written. He's really um, he's really a jazz musician. So there's lots of these complicated jazz chords, kind of lurking beneath those poppy melodies. Yeah, they just kind of all it all links together. And I, and I guess the other key is is he surrounds himself with great musicians. Yeah, exactly, absolutely. I mean, Bernard Edwards was. The original bass player for Chic, and they were mm. the um, kind of the duo that were really the driving force behind, like we say, Chic and Sister Sledge, Diana Ross. So yeah, so he's always he's always managed to find these amazing musicians that can pull off pull off the tunes he's written. And um, this is it, isn't it? That the, these are these are tunes that that he's written or he's he's co-written. Everybody still wants to work with Nile Rogers, you know. It's, it's, there's so many. Uh, it seems there's a new album coming out, right? Which 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 one of you, <laughs> which song have you written with co-written with Nile Rogers? Everybody wants to write with him. Yeah, I mean, most recently Beyonce had a huge hit with him, and that was maybe last year or the uh. year before. So. I think he's 70 now and he's still he's still doing it. And when you think of uh, the history of these, you know, Everybody Dance 1977, The Freak was 1978. You know, there's these this a, a long time been on our radio and yet people still love listening to them, still love dancing to them. What is it about the makeup of these tracks and as you break them down and and put them on the stage each night after night? What is what is it about it? What's he do? I think um I think he's just, like I said before, I think he's just kind of got the magic touch with writing music. He knows what works and knows how to um, create these songs that have that impact from the from the first listen. As soon as you put on Good Times, or as soon as you put on The Freak, you only have to listen to a couple of seconds and you know exactly which song it is. I, I mean, he, 
it, there's something about the tempo of his music as well, isn't there? Yeah, they're all about kind of um, to get a bit geeky. They're around about 120 beats per minute, and 120 beats per minute is that famous tempo which really gets people on their feet and fills up the dance floor. So um, every little detail, I think, is really considered. Yeah, just to be able to get out there and, and shuffle. Everybody feels they can dance to it, <laughs> no matter what. <laughs> Every, everybody, even the worst dancers, feel they can get up there and dance to it. So obviously you've got great musicians. <laughs> the other thing you need, of course, are the vocalists because um, uh, these songs you know, have some decent vocal tracks. There's harmonies in there as well. Uh, so is your wife one of the vocalists? Yeah, my wife Kelly's uh, one of our singers. Absolutely. We've got, uh, so we have two, two singers which are covering kind of all the female vocals. So they have to, every night they have to pull off the Sister Sledges and the Dana Rosses and the Madonnas and the Carly Simon and everyone else. And then us um, male musicians, we kind of, um, we fill in with a bit with the David Bowie's <laughs> and songs like that as much as we can. So plenty, yeah, plenty of singing happening. And what's it been like at the moment? I mean, we're in this, these summer months. Are you, do you do in festivals? What sort of things are you getting up to? Yeah, we, lo- we love the summer. We love the summer because we, we play all over the country pretty much. And to turn up to somewhere we might not have been before, and have these amazing stages and setups and fantastic crowd. Be able to play these songs to everyone. We, yeah, we love festival season. It's great. It's great. And I know you teach bass guitar and guitar. Uh, you're also a head of a bass department at a, a music college in Brighton as well. So, are, are you showing your young students what you're getting up to? You're showing them the videos of what you do, <laughs> what your day job is. I do. It's so it's so funny because I play to um obviously when you're playing on stage in the tribute band, you play to hundreds of people. It's when you play to people you know, like your family or your, or your friends or your students. That's when, that's when you really feel the pressure. I can play to, um, I can have like loads of eyes on me and feel no pressure. As soon as there's someone I recognize in the crowd, suddenly everything gets a bit more tense. <laughs> I, feel, <laughs> I feel like I've got to really got to demonstrate what I'm doing. But um, yeah, I mean, there's quite a lot of um, bass pyrotechnics, I'm guessing, happening in the show. Mm. So uh, it's great fun for me. So for people coming along to your show, is it one of those where there are opportunities to get up and dance what you know what, what's it like because obviously the, the playhouse is is seated it is yeah it is um we haven't yet played the playhouse so we're, um when, when we play theaters people often can't resist the, the opportunity to dance so we might see them in the aisles or they come down the front yeah or they'll be stood up in rows in their seats and kind of dancing there or even if they're sat down you can you see their shoulders moving in their <laughs> feet tapping in their head it's irresistible with this music i think well, it's a lovely venue. Uh, I'm sure you're, it's going to sound absolutely great in there as well. The acoustics will be fantastic in there. Have a great night. This Friday then, 7.30 starts. That's it, yeah. Yeah. Um, there's no support band. It's you guys all night, yeah? Exactly, yeah. We can't wait. We can't wait. 7.30, Friday night. Uh, tickets available from the Playhouse uh, booking office if you want to uh, go along and see that one on Playhouse online as well. Aidan, thanks ever so much for joining us. Have a great night in Cheltenham. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Cheers. Thanks a lot. Aidan Hampson uh, from Chic to Chic at the Playhouse uh, this Friday night, 7.30. That one kicks off. Well, he'll be playing bass lines like this. <laughs> <laughs> 